Hello, welcome to Out and About with Martin. Today is my second day of my Scottish tour. Currently going over the Kessock Bridge in Inverness, where I've joined the North Coast 500 route. Today I'll be following the east coast of Scotland up to John O'Groats. On the way I'll be visiting Rogie Falls, to Robin Castle, where I'm hoping to catch a falconry display, and then visiting the Duncan's Bee Stacks, which are the actual furthest northeast point of Britain, although Land's End, just a mile away, just take all the glory. From Land's End, I'll be continuing along the north coast to Dunnet Bay, where I'll be camping out for the night before continuing on my NC500 journey. So sit back and enjoy the ride. I'm here at the Rogie Falls car park. It's a pay and display car park. The information board and toilets. Parking charges are £2 for two hours, £3 for four hours. There's two trails here. There's a salmon trail, which is a half mile walk straight down to the falls. There's the Riverside Trail, which is a three quarter mile walk. Takes you through the woods, along the river, to the viewpoints of the falls and Ravens Craig. So I think I will take the longer Riverside walk, although it's starting to rain. So I must pop back to the car and get me out. I'm always forgetting me out. The two walks are signposted. There's a yellow one which is the short walk, the blue one is the longer walk. So you send down the path, you can see the river down there. You can hear the falls from here. Whoa, this wobbles a bit. I have now left Rogie Falls and I have a one hour drive up the east coast of Scotland to Dunrobin Castle. Rogie Falls was a bit of a flying visit because I hope to catch the falconry display at Dunrobin. I have now arrived at Dunrobin Castle. 
Dunrobin Castle dates back to the Middle Ages, but most of what you see now was built from 1835 onwards. It is the home of the Earl of Sutherland, chief of the clan Sutherland. The Sutherland family still live here today. I decided the falconry display here at Dunrobin Castle deserved its own video, and that will be out tomorrow. Let's take a look inside the castle. The dining room. The bagpipes. The music room. The breakfast room. It's quite common to have separate rooms for each meal. The drawing room. The library. The gold and green room, often used for guests who are staying overnight. The bathroom. The nursery. Doll's house. The children's bedroom. The nanny's room. The young baby always slept in the nanny's room. The seamstress room. The duke's study. The military room. The castle had its own fire engine. It is now time to leave Dunrobin Castle and head towards the most northeasterly part of mainland Britain at Duncansby Head Lighthouse. Although John O'Groats is commercially advertised as the most northeasterly part of mainland Britain, geographically Duncansby Head Lighthouse is just over one mile further northeast than John O'Groats. Over in the distance there you can see the Orkney Islands. And over on the small island of Muckle Skerry, you can see Pentland Skerry's lighthouse. Just a short walk from the lighthouse is the 60 metre high Duncansby Stacks. Of course, you can't visit John O'Groats without the obligatory photo at the signpost.
I've now travelled along the north coast just a few miles to Dunnet Head, which is the most northerly part of the mainland Britain. This is where I will be camping out for the night. Tomorrow I'll be heading along the north coast and then down the west coast where I'll be taking a boat trip to see the highest waterfall in the United Kingdom. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like this vlog and subscribe if you haven't already done so. It costs you nothing and helps my channel grow. You can also help me make more videos like this and buy me a coffee by using the link in the description below. I'll see you next week. Bye.